the life of Tilikum the whale. Okay. Yo, Calorix, thank you for the resub. 14 months. Pedro with the 10 months. Grimothy with On the, the two months. Welcome February, back. 2010, an orca trainer at SeaWorld Orlando in Florida was pulled into the water by one of her charges. An audience of at least 50 people watched as the woman fought for her life against the killer whale, Holy which shit. seemed intent on dragging her to the bottom of its tank. She would, unfortunately, not survive the encounter. The trainer's name was Dawn Branchot. The whale's name was Tilikum. And this was not the first time that he had taken a human life. Holy shit! Tilikum was a male orca, or killer whale, a species known for their distinctive black and white patterning. Orcas can grow up to 9 meters or 30 feet long from nose to tail. They are remarkably intelligent and sociable creatures who hey, thrive Chelsea, in small family up. groups or pods. They have been seen communicating with one another vocally and using complex tactics to mm -hmm. hunt and capture their prey. Orcas have a varied diet and will Dude, snack on fish, small sharks, and small marine mammals. Despite their toothy appearance, there are very few records of an orca or orcas attacking a human being in the wild. On occasion, they have rammed and even sunk boats, but almost never appear deliberately aggressive to individual humans in the water. Tilikum was captured off the coast of Iceland when he was two years old, along with two other young orcas from his group. He was transported to a small zoo in the south of Iceland, where he remained for a year before being shipped across the seas to Canada. There, he became a resident at a public aquarium in Oak Bay near the city of Victoria. The name of the aquarium was Sealand of the Pacific. Sealand of the Pacific's main attraction was the orca arena, where mm. several adult orcas were displayed in a swimming pool-sized pen, separated from the ocean by a reinforced net. The orcas were trained to give shows on an hourly basis. They would perform various stunts, including one where they would leap from the water and smack a dangling target with their tail. It was, by all accounts, a very popular attraction with local residents and tourists alike. Most visitors to Sealand knew very little about orcas, and it did not occur to them that the animals were anything less than happy with their situation. However, trainers and other employees at Sealand noticed that the captive orcas were sometimes aggressive to one another, and that their habitat was small and lacking in stimulation. On the 20th of February, 1991, 20-year-old Kelty Byrne was working a shift at the attraction, when she slipped and fell into the orca pool. Kelty, a student who had been working at the aquarium for some extra income, was a competitive swimmer. In oh, different wow. circumstances, okay. <clears throat> a slip into the pool would have been no problem whatsoever for her to recover from. On this day, however, three orcas converged on Kelty. One orca, identified by onlookers as Tilikum, seized her and began repeatedly dragging her under the water, keeping her submerged for longer and longer periods Holy each time. Holy shit! Though her fellow trainers scrambled to try and help, there was very little they could do to force the orca to relinquish its hold on Kelty. After several frantic minutes, Kelty passed away. Her death was later recorded as an accidental drowning. The actions of the orcas were attributed to the fact that they were surprised by her fall, and that one of them was pregnant. The death of a trainer in such violent and unexpected circumstances led to the closure of Sealand. The resident orcas, including Tilikum, were sold to SeaWorld. SeaWorld? established in 1964, is an American chain of aquatic theme parks. Each individual SeaWorld Dude, that's park so features fucking a mixture sad, of man. educational displays, captive animals, water-based thrill rides, and options for dining and shopping. In most cases, orcas were and are some of the most popular attractions at any given SeaWorld park. Tilikum was taken to SeaWorld Orlando in Florida, where he was used both as part of a breeding program and also as a performer in regular shows for the public. When performing, Tilikum was generally introduced as Shamu, a name the park had used for its performing orcas ever since they were first introduced. Some of the trainers working with Tilikum at SeaWorld were not aware that he had been involved in the death of a trainer at Sealand, although- That's insane. <clears throat> you would think that they would have to tell 
the trainers that this fucking orca killed somebody, man. But it's just sad because they were taken out of captivity, right? Or I mean, sorry, they were put in captivity. Extra precautions were always taken with the orca. They generally found Tilikum to be a smart and sociable creature with what appeared to be an excellent temperament. On the 6th of July 1999, 27-year-old Daniel Dukes visited SeaWorld. An avid fan of nature and animals, he was delighted by the park and decided to find somewhere to hide at closing time so that he could explore further after it was oh shut to the Oh my god. Public. At some point during the night, Daniel made his way to the orca enclosure, where Tilikum was being kept. The park reported that there was no CCTV footage of what happened next, but at 7.25am the next morning, staff at SeaWorld called 911. Holy they shit. had found Daniel's body in the tank with Tilikum, draped over the back of the orca as he swam around and around his enclosure. Dan Holy fuck! Daniel had been bitten numerous times, and it appeared that he had drowned. Though the death of this- I mean, <clears throat> like, look at the situation, man. You take a wild animal, you capture it, you put it in a small tank. It grows up there. It's probably going to have some hatred for its captors. It kills one of them. Then you don't tell the next people that <clears throat> you sell the whale to that it killed someone. Then you have this guy that stays after closing time and then goes out and explores. Dude, that situation was so unbelievably avoidable, man. <laughs> like, it was so unbelievably avoidable. And then the killer whale kills him and wears him like it's a trophy, un like on his back. The whale knew what it was doing. Dude, orcas are smart, man. This young man was shocking. SeaWorld emphasized that Daniel was a homeless drifter with some history of petty criminality. He had deliberately avoided staff to access the orca pool at a time when he was not supposed to. And this, argued SeaWorld, was yeah. the main reason for his death. I mean, not any negligence on their part. Though a lawsuit was launched against the park following Daniel's death, it was dropped just a few months later, and Tilikum continued to perform at SeaWorld. On the 24th of February, 2010, following a successful Dine with Shamu show, Tilikum was being tended to by 40-year-old senior trainer Dawn Brancho. When Dawn's ponytail touched the surface of the pool, Tilikum lunged forward and grabbed it. Dawn was pulled into the pool and dragged underwater Holy by Tilikum. Fuck. In front of a horrified audience, Dawn fought to escape the pool, while Tilikum butted, bit, and repeatedly dragged her down into the water. Once again, the other trainers could only attempt to distract Tilikum, but could do nothing to bring an end to the attack. After several violent minutes, during which Tilikum severed Dawn's arm, Dawn passed away from her injuries. It had been Dawn's lifelong ambition to be a SeaWorld trainer, ever since watching orcas perform as a child. She had worked there happily for 15 years and was passionate about educating the public and looking after and understanding the animals in her care. This highly public and highly publicized killing resulted in significant changes at SeaWorld. The company was fined $75,000 by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, and there are not even a lot of money installed along the edges of some pools. Trainers would continue to work with Tilikum, but would not routinely get into the water with the orcas. Jets of water would be used to massage the orcas instead of trainers using their hands. On the 19th of January 2013, the documentary Blackfish premiered at the Sundance Film Festival. It told the story of Tilikum's life and alleged that it was a lack of stimulation and an inappropriate environment that had led to the orca's violent behavior. The film, which also highlighted the conditions in which captive orcas were kept, resulted in a drop in attendance at SeaWorld parks, and in a public outcry against the use of orcas in entertainment. SeaWorld refuted some of the claims made in the documentary, pointing out, for example, that SeaWorld did an exceptional amount to rescue and rehabilitate injured or beached orcas, that SeaWorld was constantly improving its enclosures, and that many documented precautions were taken in the handling and care of Tilikum and other orcas. Despite this, the attention garnered by the film led to a change in the law. 
This prompted SeaWorld to announce that orcas would still be displayed for educational purposes, but would no longer be used in theatrical shows, and that their program to breed orcas in captivity would be stopped, with their current orcas gradually retired as they got older. Tilikum continued to live and be displayed at SeaWorld Orlando until his death in January 2017, as a result of a bacterial infection. He was 36 years old, approximately the average lifespan of an orca in captivity. Orcas in their natural habitats have been observed to live much longer. Of four fatal attacks by orcas on humans that have taken place in recent history, Tilikum Holy was shit. responsible for three. The exact reasons for his behaviour can never be known, but his case illustrates the risks inherent in keeping wild, powerful, and intelligent animals Dude, I just, I feel, <clears throat> I feel sorry for the whale. I mean, also the people, but... I mean, that was a super good video, but that was sad. <laughs>